Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I'm Keely, registered yoga teacher, and today we'll be talking about what to expect in your very first yoga class. Attending your first yoga class should be a really exciting experience. Obviously, you've booked in, you've signed up because you're motivated to go. Either it's a goal that you are aiming to strive for, whether it's a habit you're looking to create and integrate into your day-to-day -day life, or maybe you've just been curious about it for a while and you're ready to give it a go. So I'm hoping that this video gives you a really clear picture on some of the things that you can expect when going to your first yoga class. So hopefully you can feel a little more centered, a little more calm, less anxious, and go in feeling relatively confident, inspired, and ready to attend your first class. Before we get too much into the nitty gritty and the details of the video, I just want to clarify that every yoga class is going to be different. So what I say here might not apply across the board, however these concepts I've made sure that they're quite general and to be expected in the majority of studios and classes that you'll attend. What you can expect at a class will really depend on the style of yoga you're attending. So it's really important as a beginner that you try different styles of yoga, and then you'll know what to expect in each different style or each different class. Some classes are a lot slower, so you'll start with a lot longer meditations, maybe a long seated posture, where other classes are a bit more high intensity, such as a vinyasa or a rocket yoga, power yoga, that's generally getting straight into it. Another really important thing to remember, if you do not like your class or you're not really connecting with the teacher, don't be afraid to keep trying, try different teachers, try different classes, and eventually one of them might seem out to you. So be patient through your journey and really trust the process. Allow yourself to connect to different yoga teachers, different studios, and see if any of those sing out to you in your local area or you can always find different classes, different teachers online. So the very first thing to do is to book into the class. This is so helpful for the teacher because they know who's attending the class, how many students to expect, and you can guarantee before you walk out of the door that there's a place in that room for you. How you book with the teacher will be really dependent if you're doing more of a community class. So I run community classes, I hire out a room in a hall. So I've got flyers and I've got online posts and people can either call my phone number and book in that way or they can send me an email and that's really helpful for me personally. If you're going through a studio, they usually have a booking system on their website and you can just go through that. You can even pay before you go and everything's secured, locked, ready and you both know what to expect, you and the teacher. <laughs> booking in is kind of a really important step here because if you have a tendency to say you'll do something and then slowly back away and decide not to do it anymore when you book in it's that commitment to yourself you can put it on the calendar set a reminder and you know all right i've committed to this i've booked i've paid the teacher knows i'm coming <sighs> deep breath let's do this so you've booked in now what it's really important to attend class at least 10 minutes early. This doesn't always happen, but if you can be 10 to five minutes early, that's really helpful, especially if you've never been to the studio or the hall before. If you haven't been to a studio, you'll fill out a form marking in your age, any previous injuries, any medical conditions that anyone needs to be aware of, and your best contact details. So whether you're at a studio or showing up at a hall, there'll always be somebody there to greet you, to welcome you into the space, and to let you know where to go, whether that's placing your own mat down or showing you where a free mat is available. Sign some forms, you'll say hello to the teacher, and then there's typically an area where you can put your own personal items. So your keys, your bag, your wallet, any valuables. There usually be some type of shelf or an area where all the bags are stored during class and phones are to be put on silence or airplane mode or turned off. Along with your personal belongings, your shoes will also be taken off. Typically, the shoes are taken off before entering the yoga space. If you're in a hall, all the shoes will be lined up with personal belongings and you're walking barefoot to the area where you'll be practicing yoga. And once you've entered the room, you've put your stuff away, your shoes are off, and you can feel a little bit more relaxed, you walk up to your mat or up to the mat that's been chosen for you. And from there, you can choose some props. Usually the teacher, you'll see their mat up at the front. If they've got blocks, if they have a strap, if they have a bolster, blankets, whatever you see the teacher has set up at their mat is 
typically the stuff that you want to grab for yourself. Whether you use it during class or not, you'll know that they will be prompting to utilize these props at some point during the class. Once you've got your props all set up and arranged next to your mat, then you can go ahead and you can lay down, you can sit in meditation, or you can even move your body around and do a couple of stretches before the teacher is ready to present the class. You'll know class is about to begin when the teacher starts to walk towards their mat. And once they've sat on their mat, that's kind of the cue that class is about to begin. If you're feeling those first time nerves, just trust that the teacher will get on the mat at the appropriate time when class is meant to start. So just allow yourself to be in that space. If you're feeling a little nervous and jittery, that's totally fine. But once the teacher sits on the mat, you can rest easy, be rest assured that class is about to begin. Once class starts, Typically, there's a sensory experience that occurs. So when you first walk into the studio, typically there's some type of smell, whether that's essential oils, some studios use incense, and some of them just have the natural smells of the room occurring. It depends where you go. Sometimes there'll be music playing, other teachers prefer not to play music, and some will have kind of a soft background noise. There'll be other teachers and other classes where it's just complete silence, complete stillness, the lights might be dimmed, there may be natural lighting. So there's all types of different sensory experiences occurring. Typically, if you walk into a space and you've got all those senses happening, you've got sights, you've got smells, you've got sounds, typically, once class starts, you'll find the music gets turned down completely or gets really, really soft. Typically, the smells, so the incense that were burning or maybe essential oils, if those were going during the class, you'd find that the smells would start to dissipate. Coming into the space and having that stimulation and all of those senses, and then as class goes on, those senses slowly start to fade away, fade away, allowing us to drop in and drop deeper into the body. Most general one hour classes, you can expect about five to 10 minutes to be guided and to be gentle and soft. So typically some type of meditation or maybe some really gentle joint movement, joint activation. And usually there'll be an intention set at the beginning of class. So that intention is sometimes selected by the teacher and something you can follow through and they may bring it up during the class. Other teachers may allow you that space to just set your own intention and gentle reminders during the class to come back into that intention, come back into that space. And if you're not familiar with intention setting, it's usually choosing a word or a sentence that you really want to embody during the practice, such as gratitude, peace, forgiveness, and really feeling into the body. That's why you've got that moment of silence to really connect into your internal space and sense what you're feeling. If you're feeling a little angry, you can set an intention around being able to forgive that person or to forgive yourself. Intention setting can be found in most classes because it's just so crucial to really take a moment to look inward and to feel into the body, the mind, the soul. But also on your first class, if that's all a bit too much, just sitting there and breathing and not worrying about an intention is totally okay. Just being there, that's an intention in itself. Showing up, that's also just an intention in itself naturally. You set that for yourself by showing up. And if that is your goal to just show up, you're already doing amazing. So give yourself some credit, allow yourself to breathe. If it feels a little uncomfortable during any time of the class, it's all a bit new to be in silence. It's new to go inward and listen to your body. If you haven't really listened to your body, if you don't know what that means, you're not connected to that sentence or saying yet, you don't need to worry too much. Don't get too caught up in what the teacher is saying. And just remember, you're at stage one, right? This is your first day in the door. Just let yourself be a part of it without expectation, without having to be like anyone else in the room. You just have to be yourself and show up. So we are basically moving from a meditation to a warm up to the middle of our class 
and that usually moves into a peak experience that might be one pose by the teacher or a specific meditation, maybe a breathwork practice, but that will be a really focused chunk of the class, that peak experience. So you're kind of starting from here, going up the curve, get to the peak, and then we come back down. We start to cool down and finish in our meditation. Ideally, we're ending in Shavasana or seated meditation, and this can last anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, again, depending on the class, depending on the teacher. And sometimes this will be guided. Usually at the beginning, you'll have a lot more guidance, and then eventually, again, taking out those sensory experiences, and then having few moments of silence connecting to the breath, connecting to your space, and then gently the voice will come back in to guide you out and usually coming back into an upright posture if you're not there already, and then closing class with a few collective breaths, so the whole entire class doing the same breath pattern together, or ending with one to three ohms to complete the class, which you can choose to participate in or just to listen and be part of the experience. And now you've come to the end of class and you're looking around, you know, maybe you're a little uncertain, trying to watch what everyone's doing, where they're putting things away, and just know that you're welcome to sit in that silence. You can keep the eyes closed and stay in meditation, or you can open the eyes gently and just let the world move around you for a bit if you need to have that moment to yourself before getting up. There isn't any expectation to finish class, finish with a beautiful ohm or maybe some sound bowls or just a beautiful breath and once you open the eyes, the teacher's not just going to say, all right, let's get up, let's go, I've got another class. It doesn't really work that way. <laughs> of course, we want to respect the teacher's time and they want to respect our time. So you'll have to get up eventually, but feel free to just give yourself a few breaths before getting up. And once you're ready in your own time, usually you'll be encouraged by the teacher to, in your own time, to move as you'd like. Then you can go ahead and put the props away. Usually the teacher will approach you and maybe ask you a couple questions, especially if they know that this is your first class. They'll make sure that you win all right, if there was anything that felt a bit funny. Um, and just having a nice check-in, a little moment of, of connection and communication. A really great way to get into yoga and to go from your first class to your second to your third to your fourth to your fifth and to kind of carry on because it takes a few times to really get it and the more you practice the more things click I've been practicing for about six years now and still I have aha moments it's a lifetime journey that's the beautiful part about yoga but can also be an intimidating part for some people so just trust that the more you do it the more your body will begin to speak to you the more you'll be able to go whoa i didn't know that muscle existed or i didn't realize what that felt like so that's a really powerful and unique experience that can only happen through consistent practice over time a great way to do this is a lot of studios have a new student deal. So if you've never been to the studio before, a lot of them will have two week trials, a month trial at a really affordable rate, usually anywhere from 40 to $80. And a class is typically $20 drop in class. So for anywhere from 40 to $80 to do unlimited classes at that studio, that's an amazing deal. There's plenty of online studios, plenty of online membership sites, as well as free videos on YouTube. Find a yoga teacher you really love and you notice on their website they offer privates, maybe they have an online membership, maybe consider supporting them for a little while, especially if you prefer to practice in the comfort of your own home. However, if you really enjoy being around your community and you have access and the financial ability to attend studios, I would suggest studio hopping, so trying all the different trials at the studios that implement missions or values that align with you. So look at their website, see what they're about, what type of classes they have, what time their classes are, and seeing where that fits into your schedule. Do the trial, and if you love it and just go, wow, I don't want to go anywhere else, you can go ahead and stay there for as long as you'd like. Or if you enjoyed it, but you still want to get a taster, Go ahead, try all the studios, and then you can choose from there which one you'd like to keep attending.
Hope that this video helped you and served you in some type of way. I hope you're feeling a little less nervous and a little bit more excited for your very first yoga class. As I mentioned before, you can always check down into my channel below and you can have access to a couple of free classes there to give it a try. I also have a free ebook that's got 10 postures that are really common in majority of yoga classes. So you can go ahead and check out that ebook in the description down below and that will give you some photos as well as some cue references onto how to get into the posture, what you should be engaging. So you can also check that out down below. And for all the home practitioners, I've also got a seven day at home yoga retreat. This is an online course which can be downloaded and done at any time at your own leisure. And once you've got it, it's yours for lifetime access. If you're also curious about maybe an online course, you can also check that out in the description box below. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.